Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Astra Microwave Products Limited Q2 FY25 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on belief, opinion and expectation of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the lesson-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on the touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. S.G. Reddy, Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Yusuf. And good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you to the post results call of our company. I am with my colleagues, uh, Mr. M. V. Reddy and Mr. Atim Kabra, and AGE, our investor relations advisors. The results and investors' presentation for uh, Q2 FI25 are already uploaded on the company website and stock exchanges. I hope uh, you had a chance to look at it. In terms of the highlights, uh, I'm happy to share with you in continuation of uh, decent start for the financial year, we were able to deliver good performance for Q2 also. In terms of uh, particulars, the top line for uh, at the consolidated level is about 230 crores, with a, which, which is an year-on-year -year growth of about 21%. This performance is in line with our expectations. On the profitability fr front, we continue to maintain our repeater margins at the sustainable level at the rate of around 21%. Uh, this improved uh, profitability is largely because of the product mix, which is skewed more towards uh, domestic, uh, as we have shared with you uh, in uh, recent uh, calls. In terms of the uh, composition of the sales, the defense, uh, local defense production has contributed to 80% of the top line, followed by exports up to 12%, and the rest of the things came from space and metallurgy sectors. In terms of uh, general business development, I wish to inform you that during the quarter, we have signed an MOU with uh, Premier Explosives Limited for a strategic alliance to develop and sell multiple products jointly. And a JV agreement was signed with the Manjira Digital Systems to establish a new entity focused on manufacturing Navic chips and the GNSS products using Navic chips. <laughs> this uh, joint venture is going to be owned uh, uh, equally by both the parties. We believe that uh, both these uh, developments should help the company to explore new opportunities by broadening our offerings and uh, strengthen our uh, overall capabilities. In terms of the order book, as of September uh, 24, at concert level, it is around the 2,269 crores, whereas standalone number is about 2,097 crores. And our order wins continues to be healthy. In Q2 FI25, for standalone, we received new orders for about 230 crores, which is mainly from the domestic defense and meteorology segments. In terms of the breakup of these uh, new orders received in Q2, 73 crores came from uh, radars, 71 crores from EW segment, 77 crores from metallurgy, and the rest from space and exports. Overall, our order book comprises of 98% of domestic orders, which are largely BTS, that is built to spec, and 2% of export orders, which are a mix of BTP and BTS. Our consolidated order book consists of 117 crores worth of service orders, which are uh, typically margin accretive. Further details on order wings and the business trends will be shared by Mr. M. Reddy. For the current financial year, we maintain our target, which was given uh, uh, previously, with an order book range in the range of about 1,200 crores to 1,300 crores, and a top line in the range of 1,000 crores to 1,100 crores with a PBT margin of 17 to 18%. Our joint venture company, ARC, has done well during the quarter, recording uh, close to about 100 crores of sales, and has reached about 162 crores of sales for the six-month period, with a PBT of 8 crores. 
It is expected to reach close to about 275 crores of sales for the year, with a CBT range in the range of about 8%. It has an outstanding order book of about 282 crores at the end of Q2 and is expected to book further orders in the range of about 200 crores for the, for the rest of the year. Our wholly owned subsidiaries are doing well and they are expected to report profit by the end of the year. With this, I will hand over to Mr. Emery Reddy, uh, Joint MD, and later on to Mr. Adin Kabra to share their thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As we review uh, Q2 and uh, H1 of FX25, we have been seeing a high positive trend, especially considering the fact of orders booked in the first half of the year and also the opportunities emerging out in the business domain. We have a robust order book of 2014 as of date and seeing a good visibility of good trajectory in all verticals of business segments which are of our main focus area. As planned, we back good development and production orders in data and electronic warfare domain in the second quarter. Out of 232 crores order booked, 85% are from the domestic segment, which constitutes a 15% of development contract and balance on production in nature from DPSUs and IMD. We are hopeful of booking orders of 550 to 600 crores more in the second half of uh, FY25. Few orders which we booked in the second quarter, like one is that uh, C band Doppler weather radar, which we booked from IND, and also we have received a few development contracts from DRDO, and also production orders like Nyan uh, subsystems and all from BEN. On the sales front, we have picked up momentum and significant improvement as we have seen as compared to Q1 of FY25. And we don't foresee any major challenges to meet our guidance of 1,000 ports plus for the current financial year. Regarding our joint venture arc, which I mentioned as has covered, although there was a slight dip in the revenue in the last quarter uh, as compared to the uh, what we are given the guidance due to prevailing geopolitical situation, but we are confident of meeting overall revenue being planned for the current financial year. With the order book of 283 crores and expected to book 200 crores plus more in the next two quarters, ARP is expected to book revenue of 275 crores for the FI25. We would like to re reiterate that uh, going forward, we have a good visibility to maintain sustainable growth with the opportunities emerging in the domain of our operations. Uh, with this brief note, now I hand over to Mr. Atim Kabra to share his thoughts. We we'll would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Hi, good morning, friends. And I'm happy to be back again, sharing the direction as well as strategy for Astra. As you know, strategizing is a continuous process which we keep fine tuning as we go along. And the idea today is to share with you broadly the kind of things which have kept us busy over the last six months and also put in place a strategic framework for you to think of whenever you think of Astra. A 30 year plus company needs a little bit of a, a new injection of thoughts, especially when the macro environment in which it operates changes dynamically. The challenges of running a thousand crore company are markedly different from running a hundred crore company. And even more different when you are aiming for a 2,000 crore to a 3,000 crore turnover uh, target over years. So everything in the company needs to be relooked at right from the IPs, which we monetize, the core, and which are the core building blocks which need to be recurring for revenue creation year after year. Same way, the systems and processes within the company, and more importantly, our human resources, which make us today what we are, need to be uh, relooked at and nurtured. So we started this year with a focus on our core assets, which is our people, and the policies which define us and the way we operate, the way the environment in which the, uh, the function, functioning of HR happens. 
we brought in an external big four consultant to look at our uh, policies and our practices uh, and thereafter we brought in a very senior hr head to implement a new set of policy framework that shall serve our needs as we grow substantially in this era where we are looking at complete systems as the basic building blocks of recurring revenue a multi disciplinary approach is practical and it implies a very strong coordinated move between teams which have multiple skill sets which have to work together to deliver on the complete systems which astra is now delivering our team bandwidth has widened and is widening and will widen uh, with time uh, with senior management induction and induction of folks at a uh, middle level uh, and the team and the board has been very active in identifying the next set of leaders within the company we are empowering them and incentivizing them to dream big and deliver value to our esteemed shareholders i am personally very happy at the unified vision that the entire top management has bought into and implemented across the board across the company with a single mindset and a focused mindset and a common objective and all this under the leadership of our managing director ag reddy and uh, jmd mr mb reddy and at the same time they put in a lot of effort into identifying folks who are unable to keep pace with the fast moving changes being implemented across the company and there is need to create a mutual dialogue with them wherein we offer them the assistance needed to shape up in the current circumstances or move on where the skill is better matched with the job uh, so that the um, uh, employee accountability concept is well established and everybody is contributing without any slack towards the growth objectives so while we add more people we are also looking at how do we rationalize the work for our existing workforce so as we prepare asra for the future we need to clearly lay out and define a few broad areas of operations and yes i will repeat that the private sector involvement in the capital equipment procurement in the defense industry is in its infancy with less than i, I believe less than 20% of the total capital outlay of the entire defense uh, sector by for few estimates is right now being met by the private sector combined so the indian industry is just about moving from subsistence to a systems level player where we can compete with our own products and our own place in the world and this is due to the amazing ground world and the ecosystem which has been created by the rdos and the isros of the world and the various labs and while while industry has grasped the policy level clarity at the government level and is responding with products and it's not only us you have seen folks like zen paras you know and the like responding to the needs of the industry with various ip driven innovations and solutions so in my mind this is the beginning of a multi decade opportunity and i remember the advent of indian it industry to two and a half decades back and then followed by bpo then over a period of time you know india caught up and carved a niche of its own so in to connect it with our framework uh, with our leap framework we have been fairly busy enhancing the ip base uh, given that we are in the ip enhancement and encashment business there are gaps which were identified in our product portfolio we have been filling them up assiduously our capabilities have been strengthened in the areas of ground penetrating radars um a synthetic approach radars eos for satellites you know specific passive radars and jammers to complement our active radars uh counter drone systems navic which is already alluded to system on chips displays mmic chips in a partnership mode and multiple such capabilities are being identified and added to our overall portfolio to create a value added and cashable ip bank 
you know at the same time on you know we are also very focused on the increased borrowing as well as a higher interest outgo on account of higher receivables outstanding number of days the entire i can assure you that the entire board is sized up on this matter and our expectation is that as our learnings from the move into systems multiple systems which has has been delivering now are absorbed and lessons across the board are diffused they assimilated within the company you will see a dramatically different receivables profile from this march itself as there we are expecting quite significant injection of cash into the company as the receivables are liquidated during the second half of fy uh, 25 so summing up this has been i would say a steady quarter and we hope to deliver on our guidance with strong upside potential built in from our various initiatives and the building blocks which we are putting in place will provide us a nice platform to deliver an upward trajectory in sales and profits with a neat balance sheet also in the times to come we'll address your questions and show you your questions on navik etc as we go along into the question answer session with this i hand it back thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations for a steady quarter, despite the geopolitical challenges that we have seen. Uh, I have uh, three questions. The first one is essentially on. Uh, Uh, slide number twenty nine and the uh, your in your prepared remarks you mentioned about the MOU with Premier Explosives JB with Manjira and uh, it is also mentioned that we are going ahead in anti drone systems and also if you can give point by point that okay for MOU with Premier when do we expect to fifty five what kind of opportunity size in terms of products that we see and similarly for uh, Navic it has been going on for a while. so what kind of you know uh, potential we see and when it will start flowing in anti drone again uh, something very uh, special so uh, how are we different from our peers in this so that is my first question shall i uh, i mean uh, illustrate all three questions or you want to answer them by one yeah please go ahead i think we'll uh, amit Yeah. So the second question is, uh, I think also, uh, I mean, uh, alluded to that receivable. Uh, particularly, we have seen falling up, and this is not a problem with you in particular. This is a problem we have seen with all the uh, different companies so far. Receivable falling up. So, do you see a larger malaise in, uh, you know, uh, government not giving money, or is it because of uh, that uh, revenue would have been bunched up towards end of the quarter? And uh, what are the sustainable uh, kind of receivable days that uh, we are going to see? Uh, the third question is essentially that 500 to 550 to 600 crores of order inflow that we expect in H2. So, uh, what are the key uh, uh, platforms, stroke, you know, uh, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, see that these orders coming from? How much from B, L, A, and D, etc. So, these are the three questions. Sir. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Atim will answer first question of the uh, j- yeah. joint venture of Premier and then Manjira. Then uh, other questions I can answer. Yeah, Atim, you can go ahead. Yes, yeah. yes, we are in the war. Uh, I mean, we are in the warfare business, right? And we are looking at creating products. And our approach has changed dramatically from delivering sub components and subsystems to delivering complete solutions, right? So when we are delivering complete solutions. we need to you know in a, in a war uh, for wars right and for battlefields we need to put in the explosives parts in quite a few of our uh, products it's a licensed business and a specialized business towards that extent 
Premier Explosives Limited is in that business and is really well placed. Um, we have a good relationship with the company, and uh, therefore an MOU has been established. Uh, from the point of view of uh, new products and new systems which are being developed, um, let's say I took you know there's not a specific example which I'm giving you uh, to us, and we want to keep our products a little bit under wraps till they are out. But if we are looking at uh, new kind of rockets coming in or guided rockets coming in, and if they are supplying, let's say, rockets uh, without a navigation system, right? Can we give some direction to those rockets uh, by putting in some defense electronics is a very obvious thing which comes to the mind. Same way, if we are looking to uh, provide uh, hard kill capabilities into our anti-drone systems, right? Chances are that uh, you know uh, if we can incorporate products from Premier into the overall system which is being made, then we are able to provide a complete solution to the armed forces. To not only neutralize the drones uh, whose signature is uh, verified and mapped, but also take out the rogue drones which come in and they have to be taken out in a uh, kinetic manner. So, you know, those are the kind of things which we are looking at uh, with Premier, where the uh, the complete solution uh, uh, which requires explosives is being created uh, along with them. On the Navic portion, which you asked me, guys, just day before, or three days back, or two days back, in Times of India carried a report where the government said they are launching uh, seven new uh, navigation satellites. Uh, and you are very well aware of the circumstances in which uh, our, uh, Navic, uh, our navigational satellites were launched uh, during Kargil War, okay, or, or the concept was finalized and formed up during the Kargil War. We need to be, <laughs> as a nation, we need to be probably uh, be self-reliant uh, in the area of uh, GPS equivalent coordinates or in the coordinates business. So Russia, you know, the Baidu system, Glasnost, GPS, and Navic. So what the interesting part about our product is that it is soft-coded, which implies that uh, we can code in not only Indian navigational satellites, but also the other navigational uh, satellites. Uh, so wherever, whichever, whichever product or whichever, sat whichever system is giving you the best coordinates can be uh, taken in. And there's no denial of service on account of, let's say, inadequate coverage uh, by the satellites. In terms of the potential, I think in one of the conference calls we had all discussed, right? Okay, uh, you know, every every missile, for that matter, right? If it's a GPS lock uh, or GPS equivalent lock, will have a navic equivalent lock. You have uh, MV Reddy, uh, LG Reddy who mentioned GNSS systems. Uh, we are talking of mapping. We are talking of a whole lot of civilian applications for uh, for navic. So anything which you think of from the point of view of GPS, is a potential market for Navic. It is massive. Now, at this point in time, our understanding is that a lot of chips are imported. And those the landed cost of those imported chips is fairly cheap because, as you are aware, the cost of producing the chips is directly proportional uh, or is inversely, the cost is inversely proportional to the uh, quantum in which they are made. Uh, so therefore, GPS chips, which are made in massive numbers, tend to cost less. So it is expected that there will be some sort of a uh, government uh, guidance which will come in, which will level the playing field. And uh, even if, it, you know, uh, but, but at the same time, we are looking to kind of make sure that the product is within the specified cost ranges to make it uh, competitive. On the anti-drone systems, uh, which you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, I can only speak to you about our system. Uh, this is uh, a global product which combines active radar with uh, a passive radar uh, with a complete power source and a C2, which effectively uh, comes in three versions. We will have a short-range version of about uh, half per kilometers half kilometer, 
we will have a medium range uh, version uh, which is uh, by the way wearable uh, which will have uh, a two kilometer odd range and uh, omnidirectional anti drone system which can be five kilometers plus range. So these are the few product parameters uh, which are there and uh, um, well we have also got we have done some IP acquisition in this area and I will still share it with you. Uh, we will be the global production partner for uh, this joint IP which we have now uh, uh, for the anti drone system in the configuration which, which I spoke to you about. So that's our product range and I think Azurity can answer the receivables question and, and we knew what are the yeah. Uh, Amit, your other question, uh, I think uh, as far as the technology of counter drone, as Mr. Ahmed mentioned, so we have used a different antenna technology to get extended range, and also we did the uh, top stop optimization so that uh, to increase our uh, percentage of wins in the competitive tenders. So uh, as of now, uh, we have uh, almost 12 cases are uh, active in that, uh, many, almost six cases are in RFI. Uh, response stage and a uh, few of them in RFP stage and in one particular case where which we have participated or we have submitted the proposal and uh, TEC is going on. I think uh, we will be conducting the first demo uh, in the December next month uh, uh, in the field. So this is progressing well and uh, as uh, Mr. Hatim had mentioned, so we are going with a soft skill option for all these uh, Cases where wherever hard kill are there, we are collaborating with the other OEM who has that hard kill uh, technology, and we are we are uh, confining ourselves to supply only radar for the, those programs. So these are all as far as the counter drone uh, is concerned. And your other question regarding uh, uh, next two quarters uh, order book, which I mentioned around uh, five fifty to six six hundred crores place. In that, I just give you a breakup of uh, you know segment wise. One is that uh, from radar area, we are expecting around 350 to 370 crores. And in EW, around 50 to 60 crores. And in uh, telemetry and missile communications, uh, around 100 to 120 crores. And uh, in metallurgy, around 50 to 60 crores. And uh, other segments are put together around 30 to 40 crores. So this is a broad uh, segment wise classification as well as the uh, order book is concerned, uh, which we are uh, planning to book in the second half of the financial year. I hope we we have answered all your questions. Yeah, I think SG needs to answer the receivable. Yeah, the receivable. <coughs> yeah, receivables, uh, yes, as of today, they are fairly high compared to the uh, normal standards. Uh, this is largely because of uh, two projects uh, where Astra is involved in. Uh, both are uh, systems uh, related projects, uh, totaling to close to about 170 crores kind of thing. Uh, they are in the final stage of uh, completion, maybe in about uh, three to six months' time. Uh, these two projects are likely to be delivered completely, which will bring our receivables to the normal uh, levels. It has nothing to do with the bunching of uh, sales towards the end of the quarter. It is more to do with the kind of the nature of products that has been delivered by the company. Uh, up to the components and subsystem level, uh, the realizations are uh, fairly within control. Within about uh, 90 to 120 days, the realizations are happening. But wherever there is a systems uh, delivery, uh, it is taking time because uh, the obligation is to complete the site approval test at the customer end, which invariably takes a good amount of time. Okay. No that is, the questions from it. Yeah, that is very helpful, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please restrict your questions to two per participants. If you have any follow-up questions, please rejoin the queue. Next question is from the line of Ketan Gandhi from Gandhi Securities. Please proceed. Hi, sir. Congratulations on good growth number. I have two questions. Can you have any update on Manpec uh, STR? 
uh, yeah, uh, we are uh, going for the uh, final uh, test in the, the month of December. So, when can outcome be known? Uh, I think the trials are planned, as, uh, I think, uh, to complete before uh, January or so. So, we are hopeful of, uh, you know, uh, getting the report maybe sometime in February. Uh, the chances of uh, opening the commercial bid by March should happen, but then uh, it's all like it all depends on how uh, fast they conduct these trials and all. Uh, sure. So, we still hopeful of uh, getting the result by March. Sure. Sir, uh, our GATEC laboratory uh, successfully uh, developed, indigenously developed uh, silicon carbide wafers that is thick and gain based, HAMT based MMC technology up to X band application up to 150 watt and MMIC circuits up to 40 watt for uh, uh, up to X band frequencies. So, are we have do we have any role in this or it is only GATEC uh, DRDO lab? For somebody so else. Actually, uh, uh, this this foundry is open for even commercial use uh, in the sense that they, we approached GATEC uh, recently and we started uploading our designs also. As uh, since the foundry was not upgraded uh, till last uh, last four years, we are using uh, you know the uh, foundries outside uh, the India. But now since GATEC is upgraded, there uh, both you know the gas and gain foundry and as well as that come out with this uh, silicon. So we are uh, planning to develop a few designs through GATEC foundry and our design team is interacting with GATEC. Okay, then. that's very helpful and all the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sarjit Yadav from Mount Intra Finance. Please proceed. Hi. Uh Thank you and congratulations for the decent numbers. Uh, I have two questions. Firstly, regarding the Manjira and uh, Premier Explosives JV, you gave a very detailed uh, uh, overview. I just want to understand in case you can tell us what is the potential of these two JVs and what timeline do we expect some uh, commercials coming from this? And second question is around the, uh, the subsidiary of the JVs. Uh, what kind of products currently they are doing and what revenue do we expect? Uh, it is not very clear from the uh, financial uh, documents. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. new products are being developed and there is one system which ASA is developing for which between us and Premier and one more uh, entity, we have almost 95% uh, of what is required already there, okay? Now, okay. once we integrate this, and our teams were actually there last week, if I'm not wrong, or this week, uh, and uh, once we integrate these products into a viable uh, shape with a common command uh, C2 uh, uh, command and control center. I think the first prototype should be ready in about five to six months. I'm talking of uh, where we are collaborating with PEL specifically. And thereafter, you know, trials, positioning it across, uh, and, uh, you know, for a global market, uh, the way we see it. So we are not looking at creating products which are solely going to be dependent on Indian procurement. We should be able to sell them, uh, you know, uh, across the across the world. Um, but uh, in terms of actual dates for realizing uh, commercials out of it, I I would hesitate to put a timeline onto it honestly because there's a lot of work uh, which is involved. The so JV was signed and announced just a few weeks back, right? Um, so that's one. Uh, this product which we are talking about is a external product which should minimize interactions with uh, the existing uh, electronics, etc. So that would make it fairly uh, fast enough to be adopted. But uh, still, the prototype is being under development. Is you know, ex ideas are being exchanged, designs are being exchanged. So that's the timeline. I don't know which specific JV you are referring to. Uh, uh, in your other subsequent question that you asked, which JVs are you referring to for which you think? Astro, Astro Rafael. 
Yeah, uh, sir, Russell is engaged in uh, design and development and production of uh, software-defined radios. All the revenues which are achieved by the company as of now pertains to these products. Going forward, it is likely to add uh, electro-optics product line also, along with the uh, man-back version of uh, software-defined radios, about which we have discussed uh, a few minutes back with other investors. If you ask me, uh, in simple terms, uh, essentially it is engaged in software-defined radios and the electro-optic products. These are the two products uh, which the JV is engaged in. Okay, sir. Thank you. That's very helpful, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participants to ask a question. You may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Omkar Chitnis from Red Brains. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. You mentioned in FI24 annual report that we are in the advanced stages of development of technology in photonics, radar, and submarine communication. Can you provide an update on that for commercialization? Yeah, photonics radar, almost it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, final test is going on. Probably we'll be in a position to uh, deliver this uh, system to DRDO by December. Uh, the, before December 31st, uh, this is what we are planning. And the other one is uh, you asked about the uh, NSTL, uh, which is the submarine electronics, right? Yes, sir. As uh, so a submarine electronics, also we made a prototype for demonstrated to NSTL, and they were uh, uh, very happy to see the performance. And we are uh, going ahead with the uh, to complete the total order in the quantity. And that order also, we are in a position to complete it mostly by January or February. So by this year end, uh, both the uh, both the projects will be executed. Okay, so understood. So previously provided an export guidance of 22 to 23 percent for FI25. Are you maintaining this target, or is there any change in that? In terms of the percentage, uh, uh, I'm not really sure. But uh, as of now, most of our exports are deemed exports. Uh, that is, uh, we are supplying to the domestic EOUs, uh, which is again largely our uh, joint venture company. Uh, and also the Bharat Electronics and uh, there is another company called DCX in Bangalore. So these are the three entities uh, for whom we are supplying under the EOU concept. Okay. And my last question was, can you provide an update on the elementary missile, uh, which was export order of 140 crores, which was planned for this financial year? Any update on that? Elementary missile? We don't have any such... Uh, uh, elementary product. missiles. So, telemetry missile, under that category, we uh, manufacture subsystems, not system. And these subsystems we have been developing for DRDO and for the production, we are supplying to Bar Dynamics Limited. Okay. In last, and, uh, the export order probably you are talking about is uh, which BDL is expecting order for Akash missile. And for that, uh, we have subsystems uh, in place. And uh, we are hopeful of uh, getting this particular contract before uh, March or maybe the first quarter of the next year as the B, uh, BDL is yet to uh, finalize this particular contract. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rupesh Tatlia from IntelSense Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. So my first uh, question is on radar. So can you give update on three radar programs where where are we with respect to order receiver received? First is Ashwini LLTR radar. Second one is Uppa Mesa, and third one is uh, X-band multifunction radar for which uh, Bharat Electronics recently received an 850 crore contract. So these three radar programs, if you can up give an update from your side. Yeah, uh, the Ashwini as a system, uh, I think you know the commercial bits have been opened. I think uh, 
maybe i think all of you are aware you know uh, bl is a, been declared as a l1 and uh, so in that subsystems we have to see how it goes about the execution in the bl so that is the one and uh, uttam yeah uh, we have enquiry on hand now for quantities so exact quantity and value i can probably will be in a position to give you by next evening call but uh, enquiry is on hand now and uh, third the one you are talking about expand program we are in discussions with uh, bel for the quantity which we we as uh, you know we have developed so that i think we will be expecting some inquiry from bel soon so so for these three programs sir can you give some you know indicative uh, potential value and timeline uh yeah actually uh, uh this in fact uh, uttam from we have taken uh, some quantity order by march and uh, in that i think we should be around uh, as i mentioned you know overall if it uh, uh, the uh, orders which if we combine these programs some of the orders like uh, you know put together it should be around 350 to 370 crores in that uh, we have not considered any uh, program which is in a uh, competitive uh, so so these are all only uh, which are we are single party to execute or we are the only one qualified up supplier those cases only we have considered and uh, it is amounting to 350 to 370 crores uh, orders we are planning to book before uh, march 25 okay okay sir and then the second question sir is uh, this airborne uh, electronic warfare system metra 2 where uh, private sector player was declared l1 so are we working with them to do we expect some order for metra 2 uh yeah actually we are also working uh with the drdo uh for that program and uh, we are there in the uh, as a subsystem supplier for the uh, part jammers uh, in ew and uh, we are awaiting for the form inquiries in this particular segment so that that orders also we will receive by march 25 or or it will uh, i think the orders are all will get materialized only in the first quarter of the next year and and can you give some indicative range of what is the potential in this one yes yeah, the good potential like uh, the overall quantity but how much they will take it in the phase 1 it all depends on the budget are being allocated so i think it's too early to comment on that maybe after a couple of months we will have more clarity in this okay okay sir thank you for answering my questions thank you participant if you wish to join the question queue you may press star and one next question is from the line of vipul kumar and upchand shah from sumangal investments please proceed Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. So, what will be the investment in this two JV one with this premier exclusive and another one? What will be the amount we'll be investing in it? We are not looking at any substantial investments uh, uh, in in the in the JV with uh, premier. It's more on the technical and holding and working together with each of us contributing whatever we can. uh maybe we'll go, we the commercial sector have to be worked out my second question relates to inventory so inventory is how increase substantially so is there any can you attribute any specific reason for the rise in inventory this quarter see most of the uh, uh, inventory uh, if you look at it uh, out of 534 crores which is there as inventory almost 50% of that is in wap there is work in progress we believe that uh, as we have done the process of delivery in q3 and q4 this uh, wap will be converted into the sales and therefore the inventory should come back to the normal levels uh, by the end of the financial year okay sir thank you and all the best thank you next follow up question is from the line of rupesh tatia from intel sens capital please go ahead uh, thank you for the follow up opportunity sir uh, one one question is uh, 
there is this delay in in Tejas engine delivery. So how I mean, do you are you seeing any impact on ordering of uh, Uttam Esa radars? That is one. And then uh, Sukhoi upgrade program. When when do you see commercial supplies to start for for Sukhoi program? Yeah, uh, your first question is on the Uttam. As I mentioned, uh, we have now a query on hand. So we are hopeful of uh, getting the first phase order with maybe by March 25. And on the other hand, the deliveries, though there was some issue, I understand that uh, they are prepared to, you know, cope with uh, uh, this thing. I think they, more likely the issues got resolved. So I don't think it will have any uh, effect on the overall schedule. And uh, the other side, they, as far as the radar is concerned, uh, they will go ahead as, uh, as being planned as they need to get, uh, you know, these uh, the indigenously manufactured, so new time of components and all these things, they will be considering that. So with all this, I think uh, uh, I don't see any major issue in placing orders from uh, subsystem manufacturers. The second uh, contract which was mentioned, uh, Sukhai 30 upgrades, yes, as I said, did last time also, that the DRD was working out on the configuration, and I think uh, it appears that uh, we finalized the configuration. Soon we will be getting the tender inquiries, so it's going in a competitive mode, and uh, we have to wait and see how it goes about it. But uh, the program is on, and the DRD is working on this. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. And then the second second question is on counter drone systems. In in counter drone systems, uh, what kind of uh, you know opportunity do you see? What kind of revenue we can expect in two three years? And and because it looks to me a little bit competitive field. So can you maybe give some color on the margins? Uh, actually, the, here uh, the uh, differentiators between you know other existing competitors to us, uh, you know, we have got the indigenously developed the technology, uh, total uh, right from the uh, components subsystems to the system, we have everything in house developed. So we have definitely advantage over others. And uh, the second is as well as the business potential. Yes, definitely this is a competitive field. Um, we have just started, you know, uh, bidding these tenders, and we'll come to know how it goes about it. But we are sure of at least, you know, to win at least 30 to 35 percent of the overall market available. So uh, it's difficult to mention any numbers as such uh, now because there are many programs in this. Uh, few of them are with the laser uh, kill. With there in the, uh, as I said, we are collaborating with uh, other OEMs. And uh, in few cases where the soft kill, we are going ahead uh, as a lead uh, integrator and supplier. Uh, so these are our programs are there, but uh, definitely you know the business size should be at least to start with for the next year. We are hopeful of getting at least contracts worth of um, minimum uh, 200 to 250 crores uh, range of orders. This is what actually we are targeted now. But by March, I think. We've been in a position to give you exact numbers by uh, how many orders we can book it for the next financial. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's have the numbers speak for themselves. Guys, there are uh, how many people have demonstrated with indigenous technology complete counter drone system, right? You, you, you guys are in the market. You guys got to figure that out, right? So we'll rather let the numbers speak. Uh, you know, indigenous radars, indigenous jammers, you know, active radars plus passive radars. Okay, I think uh, I don't think as of right now it is as competitive as you think. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, overseas products masquerading as uh, you know made in India. Uh, let's see how how the how the how how it pans out over time. Okay, okay. So, so then then the influence from that is the margin would would still be okay. It it would be close to company average. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll let the numbers speak for themselves when it comes in. Eh? We don't okay. know what the others are gonna bid, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the final question, sir, is on, on any update on the Atulia uh, fire control data. In which? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, we are waiting for. I think BA is working on that. Uh, we are uh, we are a component supplier in this particular program. Uh, we we are expecting a week, uh, few orders for this particular radar, maybe in next couple of quarters. 
ओके ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू as there are no further questions from the participant i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments thank you ladies and gentlemen for your participation i look forward to talk to you again at the end of our session thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much thanks thank you on behalf of astra microwave products limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines